Hello world, I'm Nick Proud, software engineer and big .NET fan. In our last video about REST Sharp, we used Newtonsoft with REST Sharp to create very simple and easy to build HTTP requests. But now I've got an even easier method using the built-in serializer. Can't believe it, let's take a look. REST Sharp is making things easier and easier as we go through it. And we're going to look at how we can use their built-in serializer to construct JSON payloads, XML payloads, or even plain text payloads. If you find this content useful, then please like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help. And uh, if you've got any comments or any ideas for future content, then just drop them in the comments below. So here is the code from the last video where we used Newtonsoft to construct our JSON payload. If you haven't watched that video, then I do recommend taking a look. It gives you a, a basic overview of REST Sharp, how it works, and then obviously shows you how we use the Newtonsoft JSON library to build our payload. So let's look at how we can change this to use the built-in serialization in REST Sharp. So REST Sharp has this add string body method that we used in the last video to create a string version of our J object for the payload of the HTTP request. We're going to do something much simpler now. So we're going to take Newtonsoft out of the picture and we're going to create our object in our own class and let REST Sharp take care of the content serialization. So I'm going to remove this J object uh, and I'm also going to remove this payload stuff and then we can also we can keep the request and we can then just shelve this for now so what we're going to do instead is uh, we're going to create an object uh, in the form of a class so uh, if you remember from the last video we're posting to an api uh, which is accepting objects in the form of posts so it's almost like you're posting to a uh, a blogging platform you've got a new post and you're posting that in posting a post which is nice and confusing uh, so we're going to construct that object as a class. So underneath this main method, in fact, outside of this class, probably better, uh, I'm going to create a new class called my post. And then in that, I'm just going to add the properties that we were adding previously in a J object. So for example, the post was expecting a title. So we can say title get set so we just create these properties on here and then a body so public string body there we go so this is probably a bit more conducive to your use case because you're already using objects on your code on the client side but then from the server side you need to send that object in and usually you're having to serialize it yourself using something like Newtonsoft, whereas this is just going to take your class and automatically serialize it for you into the data type you want to send. So for example, now that we've created this my post object, uh, we can create an instance of this. So var post equals new my post. Uh, and then I'm going to use an, like an, an inline constructor for it. So I'm going to set the title as we create it. So title equals um, my title and body equals some interesting content yeah so we just got a, a an object that we can send up um, so what we need to change then is we obviously need to keep the request but we can just say instead of add string body for json for example we can say add json body and then that just takes a generic object and then determines the type and serializes it into JSON as needed. So you can see here there is a T object. So if we pass in a an instance of my post, this will change to add JSON body of type my post, and then it automatically assumes because you're using add JSON body that the content type is going to be application slash JSON, which is what we want. So we add that in, and it as simple as that. You know, it's just add JSON body, here's the object, and REST Sharp will take care of serializing that for us. Uh, so if we just run that again, what we should find is we create our class or our instance of a class of my post. So we've done something in some interesting content as the body, my title is the title. We create a new request and we add the JSON body to it. And then we do our call post async. 
And if we look at the result, we've got the same result we got in the last video where the object was created server side. And if we look at the content, then we've got the same content that we created with the J object. So this is an even easier way to build the payload because you don't have to worry about any of the serialization. You can just take your object uh, and say, here's an object, make some JSON out of it and then post it. It's, it's just so awesome. Um, it also supports XML content as well. Um, you know, even though we're not seeing as much of it, but maybe for more legacy APIs, you might need to send some um, some XML. So what you can do instead is you can say request dot add XML body post. So obviously for the API that we're using in this example, uh, it doesn't accept a content type of XML, but it is really just as simple as changing the method to add XML body instead of add JSON body. Uh, and then adding your object that you want to serialize. And then as you saw in the last video, you can also use add string body, and that will just take your your plain string or your string variable and add that as a, as a raw string body. So it makes it extremely simple in the sense that you don't have to worry about changing an object into uh, the specific data type or the serialization. And you just say, here's the object, this is the data uh, type or the content type that I want to use, add it to the request and it really is as simple as that thank you so much for watching stay tuned with us because we are going to be looking more at rest sharp specifically at things like authentication um, so you know stay tuned for that stuff if you like this content then please like and subscribe to the channel uh, and drop me a comment below to say you know how you're using rest sharp if you're having any issues with rest sharp uh, then you know, you'd let us know but then also if you've previously used other techniques for HTTP requests in C sharp and you're transitioning over to rest sharp it'd be really cool to see uh, how you found it and, and what differences you've seen between rest sharp and other methods uh, but until next time keep coding yes. Yes.